So far we have been completing 5.2 exercise and now let us proceed learning 5.3. So before we enter into the exercise 5.3, let me teach you the basic for that particular exercise. So today's, in today's class we will be learning about something called completing square. So if you remember in our introduction class I have discussed the three methods by which we can find the root for the quadrat given quadratic equation okay which is in second degree okay the second degree equation uh, there were three ways which we have studied the first one was factorization the second one was completing square method and the third one was the quadratic formula so far in exercise 5.2 we have been practicing factorization first we read the word problem deduced a particular deduced it into the quadratic uh, equation structure having the coefficient of x square and x and a constant then we factorized it and found the roots and now we are going to see a new method known as completing square method so generally what is this approach why do we do this before understanding them let us try to see certain examples through which we can easily understand the method let's consider some equations the first one being x plus 2 into x minus 4 is equals to 2x plus 1. If I take this equation, let me solve it. It implies x square minus 4x plus 2x minus 8 equals to 2x plus 1. Then we have 2x and 2x which gets cancelled. We have x square minus 4x minus 8 is equals to 1. It becomes x square minus 4x minus 8 minus 1 is equals to 0 x square minus 4x minus 9 equals to 0 x square minus 4x equals to 9 x square minus 4x minus 9 is equals to 0 we further try to factorize it okay and find the roots x value next if i take the second example x plus 2 whole square minus 25 equals to 0 so what can i do here x plus 2 whole square this 25 I can send here and it becomes plus 25 so as you all know that 25 has a perfect square that is 5 square so I'll write it in the form of perfect square I'll cut this square and I get the value x plus 2 equals to 5 and x becomes 5 minus 2 and x is equals to 3 this is what the root we got from this one next if we refer to the third prop we get something like x square plus 4x minus 4 is equals to 0. If these kind of problems come, let me tell you, we cannot solve this problem using factorization. You just keep on trying. Take this equation and try to find out the roots using the factorization method which we will not be able to solve. So there are certain equations which has perfect roots. Okay. So those will be like this you know for 25 we have a perfect root we just wrote that and we perfect square and we wrote it and solved it but there are certain equations which may or may not have a perfect square so if it doesn't have perfect square what shall we do what should we do there we will be adding some digits we will be using some method some algorithm some steps to make the particular number as a perfect square okay here 25 is given in the question we have not made any changes to get that number 25 is given and we know that 25 is a perfect square of 5. 5 is a perfect square for 25. So we wrote it. But at certain times, there it may not be a perfect square. So what should we do or what do we do generally under completing square method? First, we make it a perfect square. After making it a perfect square, then we equate and get the roots. That's the reason this method is being titled as completing square method. So first, what are we doing before getting the roots? First, we are completing its square. We are adding some extra stuff to it to equate the square to get the perfect square once we get the perfect square i mean the root there then we can write it in perfect square and equate it okay i hope you people understood now all the quadratic equations may not have perfect square roots so what we do to adjust here and there we just make the square perfect and then we solve it through the factorization or maybe some other method so this method is been titled as completing square method so this was a brief background for you people to understand the application of the method so this method is used wherever the perfect square of the root is not given and we tend to make it perfect and get the root easily now let me proceed explaining you the 
importance of using this method in this particular topic. So, for the equation, like example 3, which cannot be solved or deduced through factorization, there we use the method of completing square okay so where it is used that is the thing i have mentioned here for the equations like example 3 which cannot be deduced or which cannot be solved by using factorization method for those kind of equations we just generally use this completing square method now we'll be trying to know like what all changes do we do okay let us try to understand it what is the idea behind this okay so the idea behind this method what do we generally do under this method that i'm going to mention here is to adjust the left hand side usually known as hs lhs usually known as lhs of the equation left hand of u or the equation yes it is your left hand and the equation side okay the equation which comes towards your left hand that is lhs okay so left hand side of the equation so that it becomes a perfect square so we adjust both the sides or especially we adjust lhs value so that it becomes a perfect square then we can equate we can cancel the square roots as we did in example 3 and then we can deduce the or get the value so this is the basic aim of using completing square method in the solving of the quadratic equations now let me give you the exact steps what you have to follow in this method be it any equation you just have to follow these steps and if you follow these steps your problem will be exactly correct so let me give you the method or can say algorithm for completing the square Now, how can we complete this square that we are going to learn? So, let me explain you stepwise. First thing, let the quadratic equation. To apply this completing square method, first we need a quadratic equation. So, let the quadratic equation be ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Where our condition is, a should not be equal to 0. Because if a is equal to 0, then there is no second degree equation. We will have only the highest degree as 1, which is not a quadratic equation at all. So first, to apply this completing square method, we should have ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 format of equation, wherein a must not be equal to 0. So that we can have x square as coefficient. Now step 1. Check the coefficient of x square. Okay. The coefficient of x square to be 1 if it is other than 1 then divide the entire equation with coefficient of x square this is the first step you have to follow first you just check the equation what is the coefficient of x square? If nothing is been only x square is given, then the, it means coefficient is 1. If the coefficient is 1, just go directly to the second step. But if the coefficient is not been given, okay, and uh, it is some other number probably, it, it, it will be always given, but it would be some other number, like other than 1, maybe 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So at that point of time, what are you supposed to do? You To remove that particular uh, coefficient of x square, you will be dividing the entire equation with coefficient of x square. So here I apply, it becomes ax square plus bx plus c okay, equals to 0. When you divide this equation by a, dividing equation by a, what it becomes? a by a x square plus b by a x plus c by a equals to 0. Wherein a and a gets cancelled and we have x square plus b by a into x plus c by a is equals to 0. So this is what we deduced after the first step. Now we have step 2. 
after getting this particular equation, we will rearrange the equation so that the constant term C by A, which is currently in the right hand side, is on the right hand side. Now it is on the left hand side and they expect it to be on the right hand side. Okay, so when we apply that, how does it come? It becomes x square plus b by a x is equals to minus c by this is what is the second step. After getting the second step, the problem or the equation looks like this. Now let us move ahead to step 3. Now you have to add half of coefficient of x to both the sides of the equation. Now, so what was the last equation we deduced? We got x square plus b by a into x is equals to c by a. This is the equation we got. Now, what is the coefficient of x here? So, the coefficient of x is b by a. So, what are we going to add on both the sides now? Half of b by a whole square. Okay, so this will be adding to both the sides of the equation. What does it become? x square plus b by a x plus 1 by 2 into b by a is equals to c by a plus 1 by 2 into b by a. Okay, so we have added this kind of thing here. Now, it is whole square. What we have added? It becomes x square plus b by a x plus b by 2a whole square is equals to c by a plus b by 2a whole square. Now, after adding the coefficient of b, almost it has become a perfect square now. Okay, so let us write it. This is in the form of a square plus 2ab plus b square. Okay, so now we will be writing. So now let us deduce this into a simple term. We will be having like so here we will be writing this as x plus b by a whole square is equals to c by a plus b by 2a whole square. So it becomes x plus b by a is equals to c by a plus b by 2a whole square plus or minus under root. Okay, so this is how we will be getting the step 3. And then what is step 4? Step 4 says write LHS as a square and simplify the RHS and step 5 is solve it using factorization. Okay, so now we will be solving some problems based on it so that it becomes easy for you people to understand. Let us take exercise 5.3 in your textbook, math textbook, page number 180. So, what's the last problem? Let us start with last problem. You try for second and third under your homework because they are same as I have did, uh, you know explained you in the steps. I'll even explain this fourth problem so that it becomes easy for you people to solve the remaining one. So, the question is x square plus 5 is equals to minus 6x. This is the question. So, let us solve it one by one. First of all, let us bring this x component here x square plus 6x plus 5 is equals to 0. This is the equation. What was the step 1 we have learnt in completing square method? Step 1 was check the coefficient of x square. If it is 1, then go to the second step immediately. What is the next step? Next step is to rearrange the equation so that the constant goes to the other side. So, it becomes x square plus 6x is equals to minus 5. Now, we have a constant as well. So, what we will be doing it is, we will be adding like since half of b square, that is half of 6 whole square. So, it becomes 9. So, we will be writing here that by adding half of coefficient of x whole square, we get 9. So, by adding 9 on both sides. So, how it becomes x square? plus 6x plus 9 is equals to minus 5 plus 9 and then here we have 
x square plus 2 into 3 into x plus 3 square is equals to minus 5 plus 9. So this is in the form of a square plus 2 into a into b plus b square is equals to a plus b whole square. And here a is nothing but x plus b is nothing but 3 whole square is equals to 9 minus 5 is 4. It implies x plus 3 whole square can be written as 2 square because it's 4. So here square and square gets cancelled. x plus 3 is equals to 2 and it, it implies x is equals to 2 minus 3 and it implies x is equals to minus 1. So this is how we find the roots of the equations which do not have proper square, perfect square. First we square the number and then we get the proper output and then hence we find the value of x. So this is how you are going to solve problem number 1, 2 and 3. Again the same problems in the second bit are asked to be solved based on the factorization method which we have already learned in the earlier classes. Now we are supposed to find the roots of some equations which are given as per your bit number 4. So let me do one for you and the other one you will be solving on your own. So if you refer question number 3 of exercise 5.3 on textbook page number 190. The question is 1 by x plus 4 minus 1 by x minus 7 is equals to 11 by 30. This is the question given here. So let us first solve the equation and get the proper quadratic equation. It becomes x plus 4 into x minus 7. Let us cross multiply it becomes x plus 4 into x minus 7 minus x plus 4 into sorry it becomes x minus 7 into 1 is equals to 11 by 30. So what does it comes now? x x square minus 7x plus 4x minus 7 force 28 minus x minus 7 by x square plus 28 plus 4x minus x square minus 7x x square minus 7x plus 4x minus 28. Now let us cut the sums which gets cancelled. So here we don't have anything to get cancelled. Okay. So we write it as it is x square minus 7 plus 4 is minus 3x. Again we have minus x minus 28 minus 7 by x square minus 7x plus 4x minus 28. It implies here x square minus 3 and minus x becomes minus 4x minus 28 minus 7 becomes 21 divided by here again we have x square minus 7x plus 4x minus 28. So we will write x square minus 3x minus 28. Now we have to solve this equation and deduce it into a single degree equation and then further use the completing square method to factorize it. Okay, So this is how you will be finding the roots of the equation by using the completing square method. I hope you understand this and now let us proceed to the word problems in the next class. Thank you one. Thank you all.